Today we are going to become more competent in cavalry. Using a simple line, duplicators and masks, we will build a beautiful letter S, all within the free version of cavalry. Stay with me because this is going to be lots of fun. So the aim is to end with something similar to this which, as I told you at the beginning, uh, will help us be more proficient or more competent in cavalry. So let's go for it. First thing that we are going to create is a simple line by holding on Alt or Option on a Mac and clicking on the line here. And this one, it's going to be within a duplicator. So if I have the layer selected, and I click here on the duplicator button it is going to be contained instantly here in the input shapes if you click on this button you can see that it is there but let's erase this if you create the duplicator nothing is happening let's make this visible again and you can drag and drop the basic line or the line here in the input shape which is the same as creating the duplicator while having this selected next step is if we click on the duplicator within the distribution settings we need to change it to circle and here in the count is where we just by eye at the moment change the parameters so that it's, it's more appealing to the eye and then in the basic line which is like the thing that's being cloned or repeated throughout the duplicator if I click there in the stroke parameters I can change the thickness of it in the width I like it to be like all the lines really close together so I'm going to keep tweaking this now it feels super super nice to me and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to explain you a little bit of a trick but it's essential to graphic design which is how to show the rules and play with or work with guides so to show the rules the shortcut is control or command R so whenever you have them visible, you can drag from the edge or where the rules stand and create a line. So what I'm doing here is I want to create a line, a vertical line and an horizontal line just there. Because I need to have a visual tracking about if these lines here are perfectly parallel to this guide okay so if I go back to the duplicator and I change the count I think now is working you see that this is parallel and I want that to be like that because I'm going to mask out or hide this part here and I want it to feel very clean okay let's if we go again to the finalized example and we hide one of these uh, this is not working perfectly well you see here Arrgh, oh no this mistake but we are going to make it better now okay so it is the time for masking out this part of our shape okay so while holding on alt or option on a mac i'm going to click here on the square to create one and i'm going to place it yes let's go closer right here a little bit up so that this is out of the mask this line here on the bottom so I'm going to change the anchor point that now it sits on the center of the rectangle and to do that I need to hold on alt and click it click and drag so I select it and move it around and I can hold on, so that's holding on Alt and holding on Shift also, so that 
it snaps to some specific points like the corner here so now if I make it bigger I can it I can make it bigger from the anchor point which is very very convenient so that's going to be my mask and if I go into the duplicator settings I need to go to the masks tab and I'm going to dra drag and drop our rectangle shape there okay and now as you see we have different modes for this to work so the second option here is what I need in this case which is the subtract option and I'm going to change the name of this shape by selecting the layer hitting enter and changing that for mask okay and also I can make all these things a child of our duplicator just so that everything is more neat and tidy on my timeline so now it is time to duplicate this which is part of my S so I'm going to copy and paste it but just see if I have it selected it's going to be pasted inside so no problem I'm going to grab it and move it outside let's erase this another option could be control or command D and this is going to be if I click enter S2 so the way I did this is just selecting one of those and in the scale of the duplicator which is like the scale of the whole object if you want to put it that way in the Y or vertical size of it it is going to be minus one and now I'm going to move it to the right so that I see everything what's happening here and I'm going to rotate it to minus 90 degrees and if I go closer I'm going to start moving it so that this specific line here coincides or is exactly on top of this one there so just by eye if I go super super close to it I can do it I think I can do it yes we all can so it's just by eye you can go as close as you want so that everything feels perfect and these are the kind of moments where you as a graphic designer need to take your time so that everything is perfect so don't rush these moments where you align things or you get things perfectly 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 well done and now as you see this is the S I need to rotate it so if I select the two parts of the S or duplicators and I go control or command G I'm going to make a group this group if I hit enter is going to be my S so you can see that we are finishing here I'm going to rotate it to minus 90 degrees and I'm going to place it on the center so that's our fantastic S that we created with two duplicators and if I open here and I select the two duplicators at the same time I can start playing with the count so that it feels different in a way more dense if you want to put it that way but you need to be careful because because we build this with a mask so that everything feels very tidy so I going to select the two duplicators at the same time so that whenever I play with the count it's going to affect the two of them so I think something like that like 36 works very well within the masks and all and after doing all this obviously you can start animating all that but whatever means you prefer uh, but I think this was kind of fun sometimes the best way to learn a tool is just to build something so if you see a letter that you really like and it feels a little bit complex so to say you, you you can jump into the software and start figuring out how to do that okay 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please remember that I have this buy me a coffee thingy where you can contribute. I would appreciate it a lot. Remember that I make this entirely free for everyone to enjoy. Thanks for watching it and see you in the next one. Kinetic Type Series by Hulk79.